guys, welcome back to my channel. Why not? It's your girl, Miss K. So, if this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Like, comment, and subscribe so you can get more videos like this one. Also, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Okay, anyway, so today we're going to be going over the latest episode of Empire. And yes, once again, we see that we have another secret revealed, or so it seems. Um, and I'm talking about Giselle. Remember how last week we was introduced to Giselle's little brother, Julian? Oh my gosh. And so come to find out that Julian may be her son. We'll see. So let's get right into it. We'll talk about that a little later. So the episode starts off with, you know, the Lion family. They're at Andre's new home and Terry is cooking up this, I, I want to say wonderful dinner because it took her hours and hours to do. But, you know, she's getting a little shade from the Holloway sisters, you know, Cookie and her sisters. They're talking trash, talking about, I need to eat. I don't want to, don't French it, just feed me. You know, all of this nonsense, okay? A woman's nightmare, I guess, when it comes to the in-laws, you know what I'm saying? And Terry was, you know, she had a good attitude about it, right? But then Lucius and Carol started going at it. And then Andre's like trying to break it up. Like, all right, enough is enough. Like, where is Terry with that food? So he backs up into Terry and it's a mess, okay? Food flying all over the place. But then the crash of the food had Cookie screaming <laughs> like something crazy happened, okay? So everybody looking at Cookie like, what in the world is going on? What, are you okay, sis? You know, Lucius is looking at her like, are you okay? You know, is she trying to play it off? So my, oh, you trying to give me a, a heart attack, Terry? So anyway, they over there trying to help Terry pick up the mess and everything. And Terry kind of flipped out on them. Like, you know, I thought that it, things was really gonna change. I don't know why I fooled myself. I am paraphrasing of course i don't know what got into me thinking that we could have a peaceful dinner a nice dinner family dinner that you guys would change for andre or whatever so she got upset and she walked out and everything and that whole thing just was a catastrophe unfortunately but then the sisters are talking to cookie and they're like sis are you okay because you know i think that maybe this whole situation with tracy it has you experiencing PTSD and you need to talk to your therapist and everything. So Cookie's like, yeah, you're right. I have been thinking about it a lot and I do need to talk to my therapist. Now, little do they know that Cookie is not thinking about Tracy at all. And she's just having all kinds of flashbacks about killing Darrell. All right. And of course they have, they show us the flashbacks of Carol being distraught and just crying and I guess Cookie and, and Candace are trying to get her to get herself together so she can go to the funeral and she's just like she just can't she can't do it you know none of the above and so these are all the things that's playing back in Cookie's mind you know and it's a lot for her to deal with especially if she has nobody to talk to and you know Cookie is not about to talk to her therapist about that okay she ain't about to tell her therapist that she got another body on her hands. Uh-uh, now. The first one was in self-defense, meaning, well, not the first one, the second one, which is Tracy. And then the first one, you know, it's too late now because she probably done pinned it on somebody else. Obviously, she did, you know? So, anyway. Uh, so, you know, they're telling Cookie, you know, lean on me. I got your back and everything. But, unfortunately, there's... She can't lean on them with this. And that's the problem. She's dealing with this by herself, like I said. All right. So anyway, Lucius leaves the house. And as he leaves the house, Damon is parked outside of Andre's house. And he starts following Lucius. Okay. Lucius notices and he pulls over. And, you know, he gets out the car and he's like, what are you doing? You know, and so Damon says, look, we had a deal. You stay away from mine. I stay away from yours. So obviously Lucius knows exactly what he's talking about. And he's saying, listen, Yana, I'm just helping her. That's a business thing. She's a star. And I'm just trying to help her to get where she needs to go because, you know, she deserves it. Damon is basically saying, you know, he don't really want to hear it. But Lucius is saying, you can come and see for yourself. And so uh, Damon says, all right, if it's not legit, then it's a wrap for you, okay? So anyway, we get another flashback with Cookie because this time she's dreaming, right? So she gets, we get a flashback of her and Darrell. And this time we see the whole thing play out. And we see that Cookie was definitely protecting Carol. You know, last week I mentioned, I said, I wonder why 
she did this. And I, I had, I just knew because Cookie, I don't see Cookie as just a murderer. I felt like she was definitely protecting her sister. Now, either he turned her out on crack or something like that. But comes to find out he was whooping her behind constantly. Okay, Cookie came over there and said, if I have to pick up my sister off the floor one more time from you drop kicking her, it's, it's over for you, pal. Okay. And so, you know, being the abusive woman beater that he is, <laughs> <laughs> Darrell I'm talking about Darrell like I know him right anyway so from what from what the flashbacks show us Darrell is a woman beater and he even said you Holloway sisters it's a wonder that y'all even have teeth basically because their mouths are so smart so he is very into putting a woman in her place by beating her okay so what he was gonna do when Cookie pulled out the gun he was he was gonna try to you know manhandle her but she, he lunged at her right and but she fired that gun so it was pretty much self-defense as well but unfortunately she went there with a gun to kind of scare him and it didn't go as planned so now we kind of see part of the backstory of the situation now we don't know when i say part obviously we see why she killed him but we don't see who she pinned the murder on or did they just be something that went unsolved or something like that you know what I mean did she act like it was a break-in like what did what happened after that so I'd like to know a little more about that as well so next Lucius brings Damon by to see Yana in action and Yana does not appreciate it and she tells Lucius when you get back to your senses you need to call me okay you know so Lucius says to Damon you heard her basically saying she don't want no parts of you in her life so get lost okay <laughs> so damon goes and he meets with giselle to basically tell giselle you gotta sign yana to Borsi or else okay or else y'all gonna be millions of dollars in debt okay i'm not asking you i'm telling you you owe me so get cookie and get becky or whoever you need to agree to signing yana because i do not trust lucius i need eyes on the inside so that's the reason why Bossy went after Yana, okay, to sign her. So next we have Lala, who has an issue with how Boss Media is treating her. She feels like, listen, I sung the song with these two chicks that I wrote, and they are getting all the glory for it. And she starts calling them hoes and this and that and the third. And it's kind of weird because, you know, this is the little mouse that is afraid to speak and afraid to sing in front of people and all that stuff but now she has all this mouth and she's calling people bees and hoes and she just got all of this personality now all of a sudden okay so you know they run her up out of there because becky said listen the one thing that i did not do is snatch you know a artist up before and you better get out of here before that changes so she leaves and she has this bright idea that she wants to go live with julian recording her okay so she's singing her little song and everything and she's started the car up and she gets out of the car while it's rolling and she's dancing by the car then gets on the car and i said you know what i already know you you could already tell something was gonna happen okay so she's dancing and singing then julian hops on the car and he all dancing with the camera and everything. I'm like, why did he hop on that car? You know, now I honestly thought that she was probably going to get hurt and not him. So anyway, you guys know what happened. They hit a speed bump and they both fall off the car and Julian hits his head. So he's unconscious and everything. So now we have Giselle who's freaking out because obviously she saw the live, but now she hasn't heard anything from Julian or Lala. And so she has to call around to all these hospitals to see what's going on. She finally gets to a hospital and they said, yes, we do have a Julian here. I don't remember the last thing they said. We do have a Julian here, but he has no emergency contact. And so she goes, oh, well, I'm his emergency contact. I'm his mother. And she says it's right in front of Becky. And Becky gives her a look like, what? And she kind of gave Becky a look too, like, um, yeah, I, I, you know, like, don't ask. Don't even ask, girl. <laughs> And I was like, are you kidding me? Did she just say that she was just his mother because of, you know, the emergency contact situation? But, you know, their mother had just died or whatever, right? So was it their mother or father? Whatever. One of their parents had just died. So there's no need for her to lie and say she's his mom. 
just for emergency contact. You know what I'm saying? If that's your little brother, that's your little brother. You are the next of kin. So yeah, I'd like to get to the bottom of this. I really want to know. They didn't follow up on this situation. So I guess we have to wait to see that whole Giselle and Julian situation and see how that's her son and why in the world she's over here telling him that she's his sister. So anyway, another black family secret, I guess, you know? Anyway, so next, Becky, she has a talk with Lala and, uh, you know, about her little shenanigans because Lala was on live again telling her fans that Boss Media has not been treating her right and everything, okay? So Lala is like, you guys haven't been putting any efforts towards my projects or anything like that. I came with 5 million followers and this and that and the third. And now I'm hearing that you're about to sign some Yana B. So she's basically feeling left out. She's just feeling like y'all putting all your efforts into all of these other chicks but me but the crazy thing about it is sweetie when they was trying to put the effort into you you were acting like a scared little cat okay so what do you expect you should be happy that you're still on the roster okay you know obviously they're still working with her because there's a contract involved. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't want to work and you acting all scared, what do you expect people to do? So now that she sees them making moves with other artists, now she got so much mouth and so much courage and so much to say. You know what I'm saying? So much personality now all of a sudden. Where was that personality when they was looking for you, okay, to sing in front of people? Anyway, so, you know, she trying to be all slick with the mouth and everything. And so Becky said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give you the promotion that you've been looking for. Effective immediately, you're going on tour. And Lala's like, I only have one song. And Becky's like, yeah, and you will be performing that one song on a white linen tour with 112 and Brownstone. <laughs> and if you don't do it, we're going to sue you. Okay, and, and that was it. Shut it down since you think you so grown, little girl, and you got so much mouth, okay? Anyway, so that's how I feel about that, some nerve she have. So later, we got the record execs, you know, they're coming to see Yana perform, and they all want her, right? Everybody wants her, but they don't want Lucius. So they're saying, we'll take her on one condition, no you. <laughs> so Lucius had to explain to Yana, they all want you, but they want me out. Everybody wants me out. And she's like, so she wasn't happy with that, you know, because obviously she's comfortable and she likes working with Lucius because she trusts him music wise, I guess, not as a lover, but music wise. Okay. So she's like, what? Well, she doesn't know what to do about that. And so he said, you know, you should, it's not about me. I think you should go with Epic Records because they will really take care of you. Okay. And I thought that was big of Lucius. Okay. But you know what? Cookie comes in and she saves the day. And she's like, listen, I'm going to offer Yana something that none of y'all offering her. And that's 50-50 with full creative control, okay? And Lucius gets to produce the music or whatever she said, right? So, of course, Yana was happy to hear that. Lucius was happy to hear that. Everybody was happy to hear that. So, Yana accepts and she definitely says, but I will not be getting in the middle of y'all relationship. Talking about Lucius and Cookie. Okay, and Cookie's like, mm, it's a little too late for that, girl. <laughs> anyway, so that was that. So later after that, Cookie and Lucia start talking in the kitchen. You know, they, they excuse Juanita. And he's like, you know, you surprised me or whatever. And she said, well, I, I ain't surprised. How I surprise you? You know, Lucius, I don't have a problem with you. I meant what I said. I just got a problem. I was doubting us, you know, as being as far as a relationship goes. I was doubting us, but not your music and your talent. And so he said that this cause, this is a cause for celebration. So he goes and gets the champagne and she's over there drying the dishes and he pops the champagne and this chick screams bloody murder. Like she's really, these sounds, like these sudden sounds, these, the clashing sounds, crashing sounds, popping sounds, it's really bugging her out. And so Lucius is like, what is going on? You need to really let that body go. Like basically the Tracy thing. You need to let that go. Everybody is assuming that it's the Tracy thing right and she's like it's not white tracy you know and she's like it's something else that happened it's something that the white tracy incident drudged up okay and he's like well you know you can tell me um, you know if you if you can tell me anything and 
So basically, she she pretty much tells him it's about Carol, and that's how the episode ends. So I'm really happy that she told somebody and the someone, and I'm glad that the someone was Lucius. Okay, of all people, I'm glad it was Lucius because you know that's a ride or die dude. Like she's his ride or die, and regardless if they're together or not. They've been down for each other. And if anyone she should tell, it definitely should be Lucius. So anyway, that was that. And before I end, I also do want to talk about the little situation going on with Andre, okay? Andre got turned on by Terry telling the family off. So he wanted to have some, you know, kinky or rough sex or whatever with her in the bathroom. Then a situation happens where he gave Quincy some coke to show the daughter of a voter right a good time okay because they want to sway his they want to sway the guy's vote so they brought his daughter in there so that she can be like oh she loves the music of treasure and devon okay so they basically get that empire vote anyway it went left it went sour the girl i guess she od'd or something like that first of all quincy should have known that when the girl took that sniff and that blood came out, that was already a no-no, okay? But anyway, long story short, the point that I'm trying to make is that Quincy told Andre, he said, you're the one who gave me the drugs. You gave me the coke. And he said, I would never do that. He said, "You, you're that's impossible. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, that's impossible. And then starts to figure out that it was Kingsley, okay? So remember last week how he was about to sign himself into the psychiatric hospital and Kingsley stopped him and said, we can find a way to coexist. Okay, so now this is Kingsley's way of making him and Andre coexist. Andre no longer hallucinates and sees him. Instead, he's in his head, okay, and making him make decisions that he would not normally make, all right? which to me is annoying, all right? I don't know how many times I have to stress to you guys that I'm so tired of this Kingsley situation. And Andre just needs to go and check himself into that hospital and be done with him once and for all, okay? Because now Kingsley is not gonna stop, all right? Because his mother got killed and so now he's saying he wants revenge. So it's just, for this to be the last season, they sure are adding some new stuff and just like, it's like y'all trying to come to an end, but it seems like y'all got more of a story to tell. Y'all got more to say. So why are y'all bringing up all of this stuff? Why do we have time for Giselle having a son, like a secret in Giselle's family? Why do we have time for that? I mean, come on. Why do we have time for this other dude, Kingsley? I mean, I don't know. And have you guys noticed that they haven't showed us? They stopped showing us the little flashbacks. Not flashbacks. They stopped showing us the little scenes with Lucius getting shot and Cookie blowing up in the car, right? So I'm starting to get a little bit confused. It's almost feeling like the story is kind of like going away from that. Before last season, it had us feeling like we were leading up to it. Now it seems like we're going away from it. So I don't know what's going on anymore. Anyway, that was my review, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Take care.